Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'd like to talk to you about drawing to the ready position. All right, so why might you need to draw to the ready? Well, first, not every situation is going to be you versus a known, positively identified target coming out of the holster as quick as you can to deliver that effective shot. Not every situation is going to be that black and white. There's going to be a lot of times when you're going to have to work through the problem to figure out what's the best answer. Now, recently we ran our force on force class and we saw this a lot. There wasn't really a manner in which the students had to negotiate these types of unknown threats. So one of the things that we talk about is you have to first understand what is brandishing. You have to understand what brandishing a gun is. In an open carry state, putting my hand on the gun can be perceived as brandishing. In a concealed carry state where the shirt can come up, that in and of itself can be considered brandishing. So again, know the law, understand the law. But in the reality, most of those force on force scenarios that we were creating were created with enough, enough ambiguity that the student had to really work hard to process what was happening for them to figure out what was the right course of action. And it wasn't always going immediately to guns. So eventually, through evolution, through the various scenarios, what they started to learn was that it became important for them to have something other than draw and shoot. So draw to the ready became very popular towards the end of the class where they were just drawn to a ready position and then issuing very good, strong verbal commands. Now this does a lot of things. Number one, we want to work at not always drawing the gun and going to the target because we want to be able to say that, yes, I practice not shooting. I practice drawing my gun to the ready, but I also can practice my gun going to the target to shoot. So having these two options in your inventory is going to be super important. The second part to that ready position is then being able to articulate some good strong verbal commands. Have you thought about what am I going to say once I come to that ready? Keep it short and simple to the point. Make sure that whatever you're going to say you've rehearsed it. There should be a simple tape loop that you have that can help affect the outcome that you're looking for, which is to not move to deadly force. Now, granted, a lot of times in these self-defense shootings, the mere presence of that firearm immediately ends the situation, but not always. So being able to escalate to the point where you can control the situation through verbals is going to be important. It's also helping to build a good legal case in the sense that witnesses around you heard you communicating to the target, communicating to the bad guy, that they needed to stop what they were doing, they needed to leave what they were doing, they needed to do something other than the assault on you. Now let's also talk about the simple fact that as you move through your, your shooting career, Think about how often you really do practice just shooting from the holster. And now let's talk about muscle memory. Let's talk about what we are programmed to do. So if you are programmed to draw from the holster and go to the target and shoot a prescribed number of rounds, that is going to be a very hard thing to prevent. I mean, I like to think that I have the presence of mind to think my way through all these problems, but if you are a product of your training and all you've ever done from your training is to draw and shoot, it's going to be really hard for you to actually expect to be able to draw to the ready and actually not shoot. So what, we're, what I'm saying by that is realize that we train for a certain outcome. We are actually putting effort into training. We're training to reduce the actual time it takes for me to draw. We're training to be able to hit precise targets at various distances. We're training to achieve an improved skill set, right? We're hoping that that skill set eventually develops to a subconscious realm where we don't have to think about it. But we also have to realize that that can work against us. If all I've ever done is train to shoot from the holster and not train to draw from the holster to the ready, then I potentially put myself in a compromising situation. So the important part about the ready position is that it's going to give you options. The biggest thing that it's hopefully going to do is help to kind of create an opportunity to disengage without having to use deadly force. That's the best outcome, is that situation escalated, I detected the bad things starting to happen, I tried to defuse them, that didn't work, I then tried to disengage, I don't have the option to do that, so now I am forced to go to the defend mode. But defend mode can simply mean drawn to the ready to be ready to defend, as opposed to drawn to the target and delivering a prescribed round count. All right, so I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Would love to hear your questions or comments. Please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.